And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a very late and very gay edition of Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, who is now cursing some of our compatriots with the most cursed JoJo reference. Ay, 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 And for this week, as you can as you can see, we we've been we've been messing around with Final Fantasy and the FF Legend project that we've been developing. But I wanted to do a little bit of a what if, because while we've done reconstructions, we haven't done a a um, step down from that, which is what this is. So, obviously, this obviously FF12 is a compromised um, project due to the fact that it that its lead that its lead developer had to bow out midway through due to the health issues, and they had to scramble together what they could with what he had left. And it's not like he could just work remotely. First off, this was the this was the 2000s. Working remote wasn't a, wasn't a thing. And second off. Given his condition, he was in no state to be doing that. Indeed. But I'd like you to set the stage, Zan, since you were kind of the inspiration for this. To what ex to what exactly we'll be do we'll be doing, and why we call it Final Fantasy XII Balthier Edition. All right. So back in the day when rumors were across the wild west that used to be the internet. There was a thread or two that you could pull at regarding some of the difficulties with Final Fantasy XII. Uh, and a lot of these rumors were about various things, but the rumors we're dealing with today are the rumors regarding why the hell your main characters suck so bad. A lot of people's gripes with the cast of Final Fantasy XII Arvon and Penelo. They feel almost like they don't belong, like they're in a story that isn't theirs. And the rumor was that they weren't. The intended main cast was going to be Balthier and Fran, along with Ash and Bosch. But... According to the scuttlebutt, according to the rumors as they went, when this was presented to the higher square execs, they said, he's too old, he won't be relatable to the teenage market. Put in some teenage characters so we can get that demographic. And thus we get uh, annoying boy in the streets and vapid girl with no personality. Now... For me personally, there's a, there's when it comes to when it comes to Van and Pinello, the big problem the big problem that I have it was if I when I look at it, it's very clear that it's trying to do the hero's journey thing, but as time goes on, the the focus is less on Va, is less on um Vaughn and more on Ash. It almost tried to pull a Final Fantasy X. Uh, where Titus was not the main character, he was the storyteller, and the main character was Yuna. Mm -hmm. But instead, instead, it's a case of the thing. But the the reason why that the reason why that gets a pass in ten is because that's built up from the get go. You yeah. are the in the first five minutes, you are going through. You are beginning to go through Titus's recollection of everything. And Nojima outright admitted that the usual suspects was an influence for that, which oddly en oddly enough me means he did a better job than the usual suspects did with that concept. Because I know I'm going to get some shit for this, but the usual suspects is not a good movie. The kindest thing that I can say is that it's the best movie of Brian Singer's career. He thinks the Kaiser Soze reveal is pointless and doesn't make sense. It's not that I think it's. It's not that I. Th I do think it's. I do think it's nonsense. I do think it. 
the idea of the idea of ver of verbal kint being Kaiser Soze um, ends up undermining everything that verbal had set up to that point. That's the issue. That's the issue that I've always had. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it is the best of Brian Singer's career because <laughs> the X Men movies are bland. Superman Returns what is a mixed bag that is basically his attempt at giving Richard Donner one one long blowjob. <laughs> I don't I don't think anybody remembers anything about Valkyrie. About what? Exactly. So yeah, so yeah, so saying that it is the be that is the best of Brian Singer's career is technically is a case of um saying as I've as I've often say as I've often said it's like saying that um web it's like saying that um Gary Coleman is a taller version of Webster. <laughs> uh... Is it technically true? Yes. It's also kind of misleading. Yep. But now I now 12, 12 has it 12 has is a is a controversial um affair because some I've seen some argue that it that it doesn't feel like enough of a final fantasy to to which I say well which one are you referring to because if you're going to make that feel argument it's kind of hard to do that when this is a franchise that's been doing genre shifts since day 1 indeed the most common complaints i heard past the bland characters you get at the beginning of the game are things such as why is this combat system this way you're supposed to have turn-based combat oh yeah that bullshit Putting to which i uh, i think the first time that atb was br was brought in it was um four yes pretty sure mm -hmm. yes <clears throat> but uh the the other part or i should say the corollary to that is if they're going to make your characters fight automatically anyway why did they make this live and they're talking and referring about the gambit system oh you have to set them up so they follow some simple commands that's so dumb well fuck you guys you loved it in dragon age origins just a few years later Eat shit. Once again, this is why we have low opinions on fandoms. <sighs> Especially fandoms who only seem to have a feel of what they want, but don't actually know it. Which I think is applicable here. Yeah. And if you want, if you want a, if you want your franchise to stay largely the same throughout seek throughout sequels. Why the hell are you playing Final Fantasy? Go play Dragon Quest. They don't. Yeah. They don't change. They bar They barely. Ch they've barely changed over the last twenty years. Yeah. The the, the most they've changed is what the hero looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the story is much the same. And I'm why Dragon Quest does great with the story that it keeps. Yeah. But you're dealing with a. But you've been dealing. But with FF, it's a franchise that's been experimenting since day one. I, I all I have to do is name six games. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What genres are they? Beyond RPG? Let's see. Four is 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 um is high fantasy with some mix of steampunk. And a tiny bit of sci fi. Mm -hmm. Um five I'd say I'd say is I'd say I'd say is is certainly that with a lip with a little bit of mix of horror I guess cosmic horror yeah mm -hmm. um X X Death is definitely a cosmic horror mm -hmm. and it's a much more it's got much more high fantasy and a little less sci-fi six leans far more into steampunk steampunk and. I, I mean, could is there such a thing as Magipunk? Because I'm pretty sure this is Magipunk. Yes. <laughs> I'd I'd say something like Eberron counts as Magipunk just as much. Exactly. Um. Now, if um seven 
is that is leaning further into that magic punk with a with a bit of with a bit of influence of not of um 80s and 90s japanese cyberpunk and some diesel punk too mm-hmm. in fact a, a lot of people pointed it and say that's a pretty quintessential diesel punk in midgar yeah and eight i would i would say i would say leans it leans for, leans far more into leans far more into um into into science borderline science fiction. Yeah, it's science fiction, science fantasy with a little bit of military in there. Yeah, the gardens are are de facto piece, uh, par- paramilitary companies, PMCs. Oh, uh, and nine, I, nine, I would say, leans leans a, leans into a mix of high, a mix of high fantasy with a bit with a bit of um. Pul- pulp sf because of the whole two worlds thing yeah there are some threads that connect all of these things there's a thread of fantasy for sure Mm -hmm. um that's that is i think the one thread that does connect all of final fantasy the fantasy part (laughs) kind of in the name but that's that's the reason why whenever someone says that you can use D&D to run any kind of fantasy i usually laugh in their face or spit in their face i mean Monk, you can use D and D to run anything, much like you can use a hammer to make toast, or you or use a or use a lighter to cook chicken dinner, or slap a chicken to cook it. Yes, <laughs> but as everybody says, when all you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like blood force trauma. Yeah. The point the point is is that is that fantasy alone is an incredibly wide net. That eh, that um, if I'm being honest, a lot of people who who um who argue about whether or not something counts as fantasy, aren't prepared for the question of what defines fantasy. <laughs> Largely because, because uh... there isn't one single answer you can point to. Yeah, you can. I know you can even point like. For the the widest disparity I can think of, at least when in, uh, I guess the most normiest of ways, mm-hmm. the wide disparity between Honan and Tolkien, those are both fantasy. Would would you agree that they're the same? Absolutely not. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure some diehard Tolkien's would balk at that, as they as so, they should. It's the one time the Tolkien heart diehards and I will agree on something. Yes. And so, Final Fantasy XII is an expansion upon one of the worlds that was ex- was first exposed in a side game, Evilis, the setting for Final Fantasy Tactics. Mm-hmm. Um, now. This expansion upon that world may not actually be in the same Ivalice as the original. In fact, the Ivalice you see in the other tactics games may not be the same Ivalice as in tactics the original. <laughs> it's 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 a thing. The, the only reason it's, they're all called Ivalice is because they have the same I guess the best way to say it is the same races and some of the same themes. Mm-hmm. Um, I will admit, game tra- game trailers in their old Final Fantasy retrospective did a decent attempt to try and to try and unify the whole thing. Um, yeah, likening likening it to Constantinople turning into Istanbul. Yeah, and that you know, the place where we see Final Fantasy twelve take place. Is is the part of Evilis that we have seen on the maps in other in other games. The geography is similar, the peoples are similar, mm-hmm. uh, and starting from tactics uh, advance, the judges are all similar. Yeah, man, the the judge system was so good, but that's beside the point. Yeah, the what we've got going with Final Fantasy twelve, I would say is the hero's journey, or an attempt thereof, going through set pieces, almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robin Oster is a set piece. Uh, Nabudis is a set piece. 
uh, the Salika Woods uh, uh, set piece. These these places feel like their own environs and don't really feel extremely connected. Like yes, you can transition to them from the wider the wider areas outside of these cities, but they don't feel organically connected. I think is the best word. And now, that, now I want to make something clear. This is not a reconstruction. This is going to be a what if. That said, that's not going to stop us from cleaning up some of the messes because, as I mentioned beforehand, um, Final Fantasy XII I considered a compromised vision because of the fact that its original director had to bow out. Mm -hmm. And I will admit that in, that the that um. The definitive way to play it is the Zodiac Age. Fantastic system. Um, adds in some, I guess, a job system, if you want to call it that. It isn't really jobs. You're, you're given two roles that you, or a bunch of roles you can pick two from, mm -hmm. and that determines what parts of the license board you have access to. Yeah. Inci incidentally, um, Hiroyuki Ito is one of the unsung heroes when it comes to the franchise. That a lot of people don't give enough credit to. Six, nine, and twelve. Head rider for all three. Not only that, but he's been responsible for a lot of the battle systems since four. True. But uh, the reason I point him out as head rider for those three is, well, those are some of the best games. Twelve notwithstanding. Twelve is pretty good, but I wouldn't say one of the... Ten is still the best game of the PS2 era. But at but at the at the same at the same t at the same time, um, he. I'm trying to. I am trying to. Rec why is his Why is his name not Why is his name not com not coming to me at the moment? Whom? The ori the original director, the one who had to bow out. Matsuno. Yasumi yeah, Matsuno. Yeah, Matsuno, he was in he was in really he was in really bad shape at the time. Mm. There was stories about him pissing blood. Which I don't I don't know how accurate that was, but he but the rumor mill was that he was not that he was not in good health and this was midway through. Mm -hmm. So they eff effectively when he had to bow out they had half of a story finished. And had to had to um, cobble together the had to cobble together the rest. So, I know I know it sounds like apologism when I say this kind of thing, but it me it means that I I've never been comfortable um, slagging slagging something when it, when it got screwed over for outside reasons. Mm -hmm. Because you're because we're not getting the story that we were supposed to be getting in that in those situations. Yeah. Like so, go ahead. So, uh, just to just to point out a couple of things, um, Matsuno uh, directed Ogre Battle and Tactics Ogre. He directed uh, Final Fantasy Tactic Tactics. He directed Vagrant Story. Uh, he was the producer for Tactics Advance. He did story and original concept for Twelve. He was he did story and writing for Mad World. Um, he did the Tactics Ogre. Uh, he helped with the Tactics Ogre 2010 re-release. Re um, he did Crimson Shroud, and most recently, he's done some guest creator raid stuff for Stormblood and Shadowbringers. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also like to point out that Vagrant Story was given a perfect score by Famitsu, and fact, so was Final Fantasy XII. In fact, those were the only scores those were given. The, the only perfects that those were given to those um, when it came to a game in that console. Yeah. And uh, if he had... If if Matsuno had continued to work on 12 up to completion, he would have been the first director to have two games under his belt that had perfect scores by Famitsu. Mm -hmm. Now... Um, Side note: the uh, the the super boss Yazamat, uh, 
Yazumi Matsuno Yazmat. I refer. To, I prefer. I personally refer to it as Bullshito. Well, I mean, Yazmat is uh, referred to as the. It, it, it's the super boss because uh, it, it's the illness that took down the director. Yeah. Although I will say, still not as bullshit as Ozma. <laughs> or okay. any or any super boss in a tri ace game. Mmm, tri ace games. I forgot oh, what's a tri ace game coming up soon that's being released by uh Oh well, we are getting another Star Ocean, but we're not talking about that right now. So with all with all that in mind, the idea that, the idea that ca- the idea that came to mind when um Zan had inf- had informed me about that little rumor mill about why Van and Penella were introduced. gave me gave me a bit gave me a bit of an a bit of an a bit of an idea. What if we what if we actually took the actually took that original plan and went with it? And how would the story ch- how would the story change if our protagonist really was Balthier? And with all with all that said, with all of the long introduction and and rails that we've dealt that we've delved in tonight, let us have a go. So, I think we need I think we need to make a few things clear when it comes to the cast. I don't want to I don't want to change the cast that is playable slash guests. Not at not, we're not adding anybody new. We're just recontextualizing what we have. Yep. Yeah. We're we're not getting rid of Vaughn and Pinello. We're just shifting them to to the side to let the main character, as he constantly calls himself, step forward. Now, Final Fantasy has been no stranger to making not making nods to Star Wars. Um, the one could one could argue one could argue that Final Fantasy two has a lot of allusions to. Um, Star Wars Episode Four, and when it comes to the dynamic of Balthier and Fran, I see that I see that same Star Wars influence as well because the two of them very much are reminiscent of Han Solo and Chewbacca. Not in a one-to-one comparison, but you can see the dynamic in some forms. The dynamic is there, although I think Fran might try and kill anyone who claimed her to be the Chewbacca of that story. True, B- but if but but the but um since since Star Wars is the analog, that's the best you can go with. Um, like I said, it's not a one it's not a one to one affair. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes, this is this is the this. Is, when it comes to when it comes to our cast this is this is the point where it's a matter of what of um what we know about them and with both with both here and Fran we don't have to change much with Ash there's very little that we could change and with and with um with ba- with Bosch um that's one that's one of those things we'll get to later Van and Pinello though the Big pro- the big problem is is that there's not more to them. Um, and I get I I can't help I can't help but wonder if so, if so, if someone but someone behind the scenes said make a character that make a character like Titus because visually speaking he's not too far removed from Titus. Yeah, he has the same um, the same weird cut to his clothing which given given how a, a lot of the a lot of the visual design in Damascus seems to seems to be seems to be trying to evoke a arabian nights feel i can ki- i can kind of see what the where the attempt was going kind of but there's there's a lot of stuff mm-hmm. but when it com- but when it comes to him, there's not there's not a whole lot to go on, which is why he runs out of steam after the first act. I mean, what we know of him, he is he is a he's a street rat who tends to, who tends to pickpocket and believes in 
that it's not pickpocketing, it's taking back what was there what was theirs because of the political situation in Dalmasca. Riff rat street rat. Don't don't you fucking start. Too late I did start. It's in their head now, monk. <clears throat> but be we there is the fact that he's the he's the younger brother of what what, what was essentially the honor guard and wor and worked and served directly under um Bosch. His his older his older brother Rex. His older brother the tutorial character. Yes. And beyond the, and because of that has has a has a massive bone to pick with Bosch, but that's about it. That it, oh yeah, and the whole thing of him wanting to be a sky pirate. But aside aside from the romanticization about sky pirates being a, being able to fly as free as they wish, which is something that ties into the um, freedom theme within this within the game, yep. there's not a whole lot else to go on. And with Pinello, there's even less. She ha she has a bit of training in dancing and a, and a bit of training in martial arts, but beyond that. A lot of her characterization begins and end with ends with Vaughn's childhood friend. I'm Vaughn's friend, and technically his only love interest. I know people have tried to say that Ash was a love interest. No. No! No! She was mourning her dead husband and everything. Something about it something about it feels very wrong that people would in, would people, people would insist that particular pairing? They're probably the same type of people that like feet or NTR or NFTs. <laughs> ah, feet, NTR, and NFTs—the triumvirate of the stupid. Probably, probably also have ugly bastard in their tags as well. Yeah. Yeah. People like this, we get we reserve the flamen warfare for. Flamen Werfer. it verfs flamen. So, with the, with that in mind, I think the I think um, I think I think Van and Pinello are two are two that we'd ha that we'd have to recontextualize the most. And I'd like to start with I'd like to start with Van because one hand follows the other. Mm-hmm. Um. When I had when I had pitched this idea to you, one of the things I had said was ha was the idea of having, um, Va the idea of having Van and Pinello basically as Balthiers, quote unquote apprentices slash stowaways, i.e. slash interns slash free labor. Yeah, basic basically th basically they um they end up handling the menial tasks. You have you have a bit of a ambition versus the stri versus the straight man or straight woman in this case. With where, yeah, and while that does, while it does sound like it's relegating them to background, it do, it would mean that they would be in, they would be introduced to, um, to to the part to the party in a more co in a more cohesive manner. Now, with that with that in mind, the prologue I don't think we'd have to change too much. You'd still have you'd still have the kingdom of Dam of Damascus stuck right in the middle between between Arcadia and Rosaria. Yep. You'd still have the political marriage between Princess Ash and, and Prince Razzler of Nebradia. Uh-huh. Um, and and Arca and Arcadia moving moving into to steal the midlight sh to steal the midlight shard. Ah yes. Um, and in as the result as a result of the whole thing, including including in, including the f the fact that um, Bosch von Rosenberg. Yep, getting that one out of my system right now. <clears throat> I'm Captain Bosch von Rosenberg of Dalmasca. <laughs> there you go. Um, was com was still com was still completely, still completely blo still completely blown the hell out by Arc by Arcadia at the Battle of Nalbina. Um. 
the now the the um the whole the whole thing that was basically the tutorial mission i'm perfectly i'm perfectly fine with that um though th this brings us to the first question that we'd have to handle would we still have it that rex is the older brother of van or rex was just one of the one of the many soldiers under his command so uh as much as we hate or well as much as we hate over usage of tropes in a bad way um, in this case, it does give us uh, impetus for Vaughn to sneak aboard a Sky Pirate's skyship. It, it whatever what it, whatever is going to give him that particular leg up, past just being riffraff on the streets, to actually doing something with his life. You do you do need a stronger impetus than I just want to be a Sky Pirate. Because that's, that's a daydream at that point. But if it's, I want to be a sky pirate so I can stick it to those assholes who killed my brother, as cliche as that can be, this is the only way we're going to get Vaughn on board Balthier's ship. So keeping Rex as his brother makes sense. The whole sticking it to the whole the whole sticking it to the man he was already doing. Again, he has that mindset of it's not st it's not stealing from the Arcadians when they when they stole from us. But that same stealing from the Arcadians because they stole from us thing was really caused by the fact that Rex was no longer there. Had Rex been there, um, even after Dalmasca was taken, uh, Rex at least would have tried to keep Vaughn on the up and up because Rex was from what we saw dutiful if nothing else. Yeah. So the loss of Rex is both impetus to give him the spur beyond just being the guy who steals from Arcadians because that's the easiest way to get back at them too. The guy who wants to actually do something bigger than steal from the Arcadians. I would say I would say in that regard that brings us to that brings me to another question, because after after the after Bosch's little gambit to try and get to the king that blew up in his face, would you ha would you have it that Rex was killed in the in that battle instead of being non-responsive and then passing away later? Um. Hmm. I think. I think that Rex dying right then would be more poignant because then Vaughn would never have gotten a chance to see his brother again. Yeah. And I'm willing to I'm willing to go with with that with that kind of thing. The the um but I but instead instead of it just being a tutorial and the, and then and then a skip forward I would ra I would rather ha I would rather have it that. Um, do you remember? Do you remember in seven, where when you end when you end up, meet when you end up heading to Calm after you after you get out of Midgard and Cloud tells his story about what happened in Nibelheim and how and how he knows about Sephiroth. The um. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You you were still going. The approach that I'm thinking is that is that that st that um that tutorial mission essentially is hit is told from Vaughn's quote unquote perspective, but it's a perspective he's cobbled together from one being pre being present at ba at Bosch's trial, and two what what the testimony had what the testimony had set up to that point and him telling that story to Balthier. Yeah, so third hand events essentially. Yeah. It's fine. And basically him basically using that as as Vaughn using that as his pre as his pretense for why for why he why he shouldn't be just thrown off shouldn't shouldn't be just thrown off Balthier's ship. Mm -hmm. 
which I'd say with both here, it's a case of he thinks about it, but he decides not he decides not to because there's there's some story there's some parts in that story that don't add up, especially to him. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I, I know I know with a lot of Balthier's um stories there was a, there was the whole thing about him only wanting his, his next big score. Yep. But even but even with that he does have his more humane moments. He isn't a, he isn't a complete mercenary. Not only is he not a complete mercenary, he's not a jerk either. Mm-hmm. Like he he plays he tries to play the consummate uh He's trying to. He's the Errol, He's an Errol Flynn um, analog, or tries yes. to be. Yes, he's the con- the consummate uh, gentleman. The consummate gentleman pirate. Mm-hmm. And in that re- in that regard, I'd say I'd say that a lot of the other things that ha- that happen in that tutorial act still happen. Marquise on on door. Makes the announcement that a- that Ash committed suicide and Bosch was executed for high treason. Yeah. And because of because of that, Damasca was rulerless and was basically made basically made into a ter- into an annex of the Arcadians. Yep. Oh. A vassal state. Mm-hmm. Now, I'd say I'd I'd say in I'd say in the I'd say um, I'd still do the two-year jump, but in that, but in this case, it's more of he's been serving on Balthier's ship for two years. Yes, that would make more sense because that at least starts us somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I'd say the the Stroll's not a big ship, but I'd say it, I'd say it'd be enough to ha- to house. To house four people. The ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the straw. Yeah. And well, and well, the straw, the straw, of course, makes it makes its appearance in um. In Re- in Revenant Wings as well. Where, for some inexplicable reason, Vaughn is now the head of the Sky Pirates. That and let let's be honest. If we're going with the Star Wars analog, the Stroll is our Millennium Falcon. Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. It's just and with but um because because of because of that we don't we can't really have the street urchin origins. I'd say it. I'd say it's more of. They end, they ended up do- they ended up docking up at the stroll and have some shore leave before their next big job. Or maybe the uh, the docking is to get the next big job. Mm-hmm. And this is where you can kind of have some of the same scenes that you had beforehand of of um of Von of Von getting himself into trouble and. Pi- and almost almost pissing off a f- almost pissing off a few banga yeah yeah the banga are not known for their uh their calm rationality no and Gr- granted this is this is Granted, this is going this is going to lead to him catching a lead about the uh, about about uh, that he got from old Dalan, the the whole thing of of stealing of stealing from the royal palace. Yeah, the uh, entire thing about how uh, how. Uh, he could do that as part of the resistance faction, mm-hmm. but I'd, I'd say in this regard, the we'd sh- we'd still have we'd still have it, but we'd shift the motive. 
instead instead of him stealing it for mo resistance it's stealing it so that hey hey bo um if both here found found out he'd be he'd be the one do he'd be the one doing all the work for himself and getting all the treasure but if I, but if i beat if i beat him to the punch then th then he'd have to acknowledge me yeah so because because of that and of course that does eventually lead to him coming across the goddess's meth uh, magicite but in this in this regard it's a case of um he ends up meeting up with Balthier and Fran and in, instead of instead of it be it's still the whole give me the magicite but instead it's more of you're you can't hand that's too much for you to handle and you should and you shouldn't be going off on your own like that anyways yep this is where we smoothly transition into Balthier himself. Mm -hmm. And I, I um, instead, I would still have the inter the infiltration of the of the palace just from his perspective. Yeah. Because of course, because of course, even he even he has his has his contacts and fr and friends in, in in any place or frenemies in some places. So they bo the point is that both Van and Balthi and Balthier end up in the same destination. Yep. It's just one you're seeing it from Balthier's perspective. Yep. And two, you have you have the you have the um sneak in this in this whole thing. And Of course, of course. Right when that happens, then the resistance shows up, and think and things go to hell on that front, including the appearance of the uh, of the Efreet and them landing in the Garam Scythe waterway. Yeah. And the uh, the approach that I, the approach that I'd go with with this is that is is a case of. Once we get once we get out of here, I'm you and I are gonna have some words, kid. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Uh and for and further through that, they end up meet they end up meeting Amalia. Just just as it just as it was from beforehand. And. I, as far as as far as how that changes up and up through the now being a dungeons, I wouldn't change too much. Yeah, the events can mostly take place as as per normal. Mm -hmm. Um. I would see. Now, as far as far as Pinello getting captured by the bounty hunters, I would still keep that. And. Speaking of Pinello, when it comes when it comes to her, there's um, I'm perfectly I'm perfectly fine with um with with her with her sticking alongside Van because he had, because of his reputation of getting himself into trouble because someone's got to bail him out. Mm -hmm. I know that's I know that's not a whole lot, but given that's given that Pinello was meant to be a supporting character, I don't see a reason to go too hard into into her um, backstory. Essentially, Vaughn and Pinello in this kind of setup are two characters, are one character split into two. Yeah. Oh. Now, within the within the within the dungeon. Um. I don't think I don't think there's too much we'd have to change about the chapter in the Nalbania dungeon. Mm hmm I'd say I'd say the I'd say the only thing that we'd end up. Ch We'd end up changing is um when is lead is the is the appearance of the appearance of Bosch and that and instead instead of the we can still have the outburst that happened mm -hmm. but one particular thing I would add is the is Balthier asking the question of wait didn't you say he was dead. You know, to cut to to kind of um to kind of make to kind of keep the focus. Yeah. And grant 
granted him granted him getting out and him help and him helping them doesn't ex is a case of it's a Vaughn and Bosch aren't going to be seeing eye to eye about anything, but at the very least, it's a case of we've got bigger things to worry about. Mm -hmm. And of course, of course that of course when it comes to the Barnheim passage, passage, that's when you can have the whole thing of him, um, him being him claiming that he was framed, and. The way I'd, the way I'd present this is where this is where you can have a bit of usual suspects kind of influence because you'd have him recollecting the events at the events of what we saw in that tutorial mission from his perspective. Mm -hmm. And gr granted, granted, the line about hi about him being framed by a twin brother isn't is is still not going to fly. But you're, but it's a case of you're, you've already seen it from two perspectives, so not, so there's only one perspective left to see. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um. And when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the events after afterwards, there's not a whole lot that we would need to change that much. When it comes to the whole thing of rescuing rescuing Pinello, meet, meeting up with the resistance, um, later um, later on get later on getting uh, getting out through the through using the straw, that mm -hmm. stuff, that stuff we can pretty much keep as is. Yeah, a lot of a lot of things can be kept pretty pretty standard. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to when it comes to the introduction of Larsa. That's again. I don't. I wouldn't see too much that we'd have that we'd have to change. I can't think of anything specifically that we'd have to change. Yeah. At least not for his introduction. Mm -hmm. Um, I would. I would say that what that um. When it comes to the when it comes to the explanation about the about the uh, magicite being you being you being used in the loose in the um, Lusu mines, mm -hmm. it would this would be as good a time as any to have a have a bit of a have a bit of a subtle um, reaction from Balthier regarding the mention of Doctor Sidolphus. Something so subtle, the only one who notices is Fran, who would already know about it. Yeah. Not even Ash or Bosch, uh, who would be paying attention, would notice it. Mm -hmm. And Vaughn and, and Penelo would probably be too enthralled in, in the story of the Magicites and the Lusu Mines. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the revelation that j that um, the bounty hunter had handed Penelo over to Judge Geese... Um, I'd say, I'd say that I'd, I'd say that's I'd say we can still keep the whole thing of Balthia revealing that Lamont is is Larsa. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> sorry about that. Now, when it comes to when it comes to the whole having Von having Von spread rumors, i.e., i.e. the quest that became a meme. Mm-hmm. A very early meme too. Yeah, I'd. S Obviously, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be seeing that from his perspective. It'd be more. It'd be more. Uh, a. I'd say a bet. I'd say a better approach would be to, would be hand would be um. Would be ha would be handing out some no handing out some notes to people that he knows. Because the whole thing the whole thing is just a setup to meet up with Marquise. Yeah, with Marquise Andore. Don't believe in Andori's lies. Mm -hmm. So I'd say I'd say instead I'd say in, in, instead of instead of that just um just pay just pay off a few, just pay off a few gil to to a set to a group of um a group of criers. I'd say that, that I'd say that get his attention. <laughs> well, that and if you don't if you really don't want it to be so easily directed to your own hands, Balthier would just be like, go and pay the Hunter's Guild to hand out some 
interesting information to the town criers. They'll do the rest. But of course, that of course that le that leads to the meeting with Mar with Marquise, and the and the fact that he's got that um that Pinello is Lars's guest on the Leviathan. You, you mean Geese's guest? Geese. Yeah, Geese. I don't know why I said I don't know why I said it like that. Um, there's some interesting pronunciation with with names that you have to deal with in this game. <laughs> mm hmm. Um, but the now the pl the plan that he has of of the whole, of the whole fake capture I I'm perfectly fine with keeping that. It is a it is a very it is a tactic that somebody named Marquise would certainly do. <laughs> um, now of co of course. Of course, that's when. Of course, so you still keep the revelation of, um, Ama of Amalia, being being Ash, of course, and Bosch, being face to face with her, leads to the sound of one hand clapping as it does. Indeed. Um. I would. I would have it. I. I do think that having it as well that the goddess magicite is revealed to be the dusk shard is a is a smart move in this particular spot. And when it com when it comes to when it comes to the eventual confrontation with geese, I'd say I'd say that um. One th one thing I'm con one thing I'm considering when it comes to Balthier is that he does is that he does not have the highest opinion of judges. I think that was the case in the base game too. Oh, it was, but it was what, but it was significantly more subtle than I th I think I think what we'd probably do with it, since we're seeing it from his perspective. Yes. Okay. That that I can accept. Mm -hmm. But the now of course now the whole thing the whole thing of Ash wanting to get the wanting to get Marquise's aid to expand the resistance. Mm -hmm. Um, the big the big problem is that the big problem that we ended up getting is that up until this point, um, Ash ends up becoming the focal point instead of anyone else. And. I think I think that's something that we have to address. My person my personal approach to addressing that kind of issue would be to have it that as a sky pirate Val Valthier is the is the is the truest neutral observer. And someone, yes. and someone who someone who well, in the in in certain situations would be the one who would who would say are you do you in this kind of situation, is it really a good idea to th to throw everything in with Marquise? Um. Hmm. I'm not sure where to go with that. Yeah, but. Even even if even if that advice gets gets ignored, the the point is is, is that he is in this kind of thing. Balthier would be trying to would be trying to give the would be trying to give the bigger picture um, perspective on things. Mm -hmm. As some as somebody who's as somebody who's been around. Um. As far as as far as um the aid about the aid regarding the regarding the dawn shard. Um, I think, I think that I, th I think that would, I think that would still, that's still something that can be utilized, but what I'd, what I'd like to go with, what I'd like to go with instead is, because before, beforehand, the, the approach, the, the, um, 
bargaining chip was one of was Ash's ring. Yeah. I'd say I'd say in I'd say instead and uh, that's cer that certainly would that certainly would be fit a treasure hunter but that but but there's no real value in that r in that ring if you can if it would be impossible if it's because it would be so impossible to prove that that's that that belonged to the pr the princess of Dalmasca. I mean you look at the thing it's a plain looking ring. It is. So I'd ha so I'm trying I'm trying to think what would be a bargaining chip that c that would be used in that would be used instead. One th one that's basically a ploy because he because he planned on doing it planned on helping out anyways. Um. Rather than her ring. Mm hmm. Hmm. She doesn't really have much else from there. The only the only the only approach I can th I can think of is. Because it, I don't think I don't think it's made clear if that if that's the if that's the ring that was given to her by her husband, by her late husband. I think it I think it was her wedding ring. I don't I don't recall it being stated as such. If if not, that's the approach I'd go with, and and there being a whole lot of tension about that. Mm-hmm. And Ash eventually relenting because it's an issue of. What's more important, your past or your future? Yeah. And when it comes to when it comes to heading to the di the Dynast King's tomb, um, and the and the meet up with the meet up with Vossler, I'd probably I'd prop I think the best approach with that is that for whatever for whatever reason, um. Balthier doesn't trust Vossler. Well, I think uh, let's just review some some information about Vossler here and see if there's anything we can find as to why he wouldn't trust. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. I'd, I'd say I'd say it's a I'd say age. There's the there's the general issue with authority, but. More, moreover, just how just how convenient it is that he that he shows up in in a place that's that's a yagd. Mm hmm. I um. I also think part of it would be uh, the fact that Vossler is too pragmatic. Because. Uh, even during the the introduction mission, Vossler tells Bosch to leave Rex behind, mm -hmm. um, and he is very consistently trying to make the most efficient, rational decisions, even regarding the resistance. And I think that sort of no nonsense and also no mercy way of carrying himself would also give Balthier some pause. Um, because Balthier's whole thing is he'd have the freedom to do whatever he wants, but that doesn't mean he's going to try and, uh, you know, make people like him. Mm -hmm. The whole point of freedom is to let everyone be free. Yeah. Balthier acknowledges that. It, it might, yeah, it might just be the fact that he's so duty bound. He, guy is so so married to duty that uh, that it just doesn't make sense to both here. Mm -hmm. And of course, of course, of course, that in, of course, you'd still we'd still have the vo the whole thing with Vossler betray betraying Ash. Mm -hmm. With the and. I'd say I would say that he'd probably end up quipping back about Vos, about Vossler's reason for betrayal, that it's futile to just up to just oppose the Empire, 
that the only, yeah. the only way to save Damasca is j is just keep your head down. Mm -hmm. I'm not a, I'm not a good enough writer to say what that quip was, but I'm pretty sure you can fi you can figure something out. Um. Uh, a quip from Vossler? A qu no, from Balthier. Oh, about um. About Vossler's um, reasoning for what for why he's turning against Ash. Oh, that's uh. That would be a uh, that'd be pretty easy. Again, we I established a little earlier. Vossler's whole thing is pragmatism. Mm -hmm. He takes the rational. Uh, the most rational, pragmatic course, regardless of the consequences. Mm -hmm. And so, Balthier could say something along the lines of, Ever the pragmatic and dutiful little soldier boy. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, would get under Vossler's skin. Yeah. Because it's very clear that he's calling him a traitor mm -hmm. beca because he is so pragmatic yeah just that instead instead of being a traitor to one's country it's a traitor to one's ideals mm -hmm. now as far as far as having them being being brought again to geese and the and the dawn shard um creating creating the effect that it did the effect that it did when the when, same when, the same effect that the midlight shard it, it did in a uh, in Nabudis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pro tip: don't put don't put don't, don't put divine stones as your as your fuel source. It never ends well. Destroying the entire eighth Arcadian fleet, <laughs> <laughs> or destroying an entire capital city and turning it into a, a what's essentially a a giant crypt. And as as far as as far as the whole th as far as the whole thing of um of the of its of it um ov of it overcooking the engines and that amount of mist um make, making Fran go berserk. Mm. No re no reason to drop that, so we're keeping that. Well, yeah, the Viera the Viera's ties to nature and the mist uh, is kind of key to what they are. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and if, I would I would say when Ash dis, when Ash is dis, decides to wield the Dawn Shard as a weapon against the Empire, um, this is one of those cases where there where there'd be a bit of tension because, um, because with Both. with Balthier the idea the idea of using that le of one person having that amount of power is abhorrent well not only that but uh just like geese basically self-destructing himself with the nephesite mm -hmm. um <laughs> it all it does is remind him of sid and how sid started going mad yeah it's like so to balthier not only is is this uh, the power that can destroy cities and and airship fleets is something no one person should have. It's also that sort of power drives any person mad and drunk off of it. Mm -hmm. It's a double. It's a. It's 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 two blades against his throat now. Yeah. Um. Now, as far as as far as the the whole the whole quest to to um meet up with the meet up with the Gareth in Jahara. Mm -hmm. Um. I would I would still keep this and th and of course this is when that whole thing of the ring came came up. I screwed up when I thought it happened earlier. Yeah, my, my I bad. saw that. Um, I'd still ha I'd still have it, but I still have the th that set up, but have it that um that particular ring was the ring given to her on her, on her wedding. Mm hmm. And once again, have that same scene that we had before. What's more important, your past or your future? Yeah. Um, and in that in that same v now that that brings us to one other to one other thing that I'm cu I'm curious if we'd ke if we'd keep because in the t in the tomb um 
there was that there was that moment there was that moment where Ash had Ash had um had cl had claimed that she that she saw her husband, whereas Vaughn saw the ghost of his of his brother. Yeah. Um. Would you keep Would you keep that scene as is, or would or would you modify it since Vaughn isn't our um central character? Um, Vaughn can still mention it, but it shouldn't be like a main claim. Um, I don't know if there's anyone Balthier's lost that he would have seen. I don't think he. I don't think he would. I don't think he would have seen anyone. But I do think that he'd be once again the the neutral observer with both of them having these ghostly encounters. I. E. Okay. I. E. We don't. Um. We don't see. We don't see that ghost, but they talk. But they refer to it. Yeah, that makes much more sense. They talk about seeing ghosts and. Uh, Balthier being the straight man of this particular tragedy mm -hmm. is like, it's all very well and good that you think you're seeing the dearly departed, but I'd rather join them much later. Mm -hmm. You know. Which, is it a bit of an asshole thing to say, or kind of, kind of, but he, but, um, he's up. They're in the they're in the middle of a giant tomb where they had to fight monsters and get control of of, of an esper mm -hmm. and also get the dawn shard he he would he would be like oh okay um guys we sh we should probably get out of here before more things come out to try and kill us and he'd say it in his suave joking way yeah now of course, of course, I'd still, I still have the whole thing of Va of Vane being called back to Arcadia and suspecting that he's get that he's getting pa he's getting passed aside for the throne. Um, and then killing given, his own father. Yeah, especially given let let's be honest, the whole thing with an emperor and a senate and the like, it's fucking Rome. <laughs> it's Rome, and it's all about that. I mean, it's Rome, and the judge magisters are well. <laughs> Praetorians. Yeah. And sort how many of. times did a Praetorian guard assassinate an emperor? A lot. How many times did a uh, did did an, <laughs> how many times did the issue of an emperor assassinate the emperor? A lot. A lot. Yes. There's a there's a reason why the why that episode where Fry became an emperor had already had a um already had a plaque for his assassin and his assassin's assassin. Yep. Um. But the when it comes to when it comes to vi one of the other um nit one of the other nitpicks that I ended up having in was in regard to Vane. They def they definitely show the way he presents himself. It's clear that he's the villain in the making, but his heel turn goes extremely fast. Um, but we have an explanation for that technically. Technically, I mean, Venet exists. The Acuria exist. There is, there is, there is certainly that. Oh. And considering that we know that the Acurias, the Acurians are, um, are the ones driving people mad and possessing them. It's in. It's not. It's not. Um. It's not too many steps away from Doctor Sid has Venat do stuff to Vane. Which, I get something. I get. I get it. But something about it leaves a bad taste in my mouth that I can't explain. But mo but moving right along. Um. 
I would I would say that the way that I'll, that out the uh, the appro the whole thing of having Gabr of having a bronze sc spy on v spy on um v spy on vain and the and the issue of of Larsa being ass being assassinated because he's not going to be easy to manipulate. Mm -hmm. I'd say I'd say I'd st I'd say I'd still I'd say I'd still keep that. Um. The whole. What? Which which part? The whole the whole, um, test of the judges after Vane becomes emperor. Yeah, but that yeah, but we're not that far yet. Okay. Um, I would I would say when when it comes to me when it comes to um heading to Eriut Village, that's the that's as good of a time as any to explain exactly how exactly how the hell Fran ended up meeting up and teaming with Balthier. <laughs> that story is always a good one. I it's, love that story. We never we never really get. I th we got hints of it, but I don't think we ever got the full extent of why. Mm hmm And I think I think that's something that should be established. And so, how how do you think we should establish it? I was I was going to ask you that because th uh. if there's a golden opportunity for that to, to establish two things: one, why fr why Fran why Fran left. Especially given how insular the Viera are, and two, why she'd why she'd end up tagging alongside a Hume, and more importantly, why she'd end up tagging with Balthier. So, <sighs> the <sighs> all right, um. The the big thing is what we do know from Fran. What we what is established is she sought freedom. She didn't want to hear the uh, the the wood and she you know the Golmore jungle and she didn't want to be a part of such a binding family. I guess is the best way to put it because the Viera are. Because of their shared, um, their their shared experience of the green word inside Golmore Jungle, mm -hmm. they uh, it's it's almost like an entire village of psychics is what I would say. Like everybody talks to each other very closely, close knit. They know each other's ins and outs. Mm -hmm. But Fran sought something beyond that. It it wasn't ever expanded upon why she sought more than that. Um, and she she does have a small amount of regret as from when what we know from when she talks to Mjern. She's you know she tells Mjern, you want this solitude. You want you know. There is a part of this that has left her alone and unconnected. <clears throat> um, Fran also um, she does she, she's very reserved as most Viera tend to be, mm -hmm. um, and she. Uh, but she does express her emotions subtly. So her her actual reason for leaving Gomor Jungle doesn't need to be expanded upon. It's not something Fran would do to expand upon it. Mm -hmm. She would just say she sought freedom from what felt like being trapped. Mm -hmm. And while it has left her alone or at least disconnected from the people she loved as her family, it has given her opportunities to make a new family, 
to make friends, to find adventure, and to explore beyond that tiny little microcosm of the jungle. Um, Vaughn is, of course, going to be like, well, what else did you want to do? And much like when he asked her age, um, she's just going to kind of frown at him and be like, you know, not all stories are told. And the person I think should tell of the meeting between the two of them is Balthier with Fran poking in every so often with, like, deflating all of his um, exaggerations. Yeah. Because he's going he's gonna to be like, uh, you know, I swooped in and saved her stuff. She's like, I'm the one who shot down X, Y, and Z while you were running for your life. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff, stuff like that. Um, yeah. The specifics are, I'm going to be honest, a little immaterial. Mm -hmm. Um, Fran, as reserved as she is, what's going to be more important is the fact that there is, during this storytelling, more emoting than you would have seen from Fran during the rest of the game thus far. Mm -hmm. Something to humanize her. Or, well, she's a Vieira, but still. Something something to make her... Yes. Yeah. Something to make her relatable and more, um, more approachable, I guess is the best word. She's still going to be quite aloof, as most Fiera are. But there's going to be that hint there that she doesn't want to be. She, she's, she wants to have her adventures, she wants to be free, and she, she wants to make friends. And so, uh, by the end of the story, Vaughn and Penelo are going to be, oh, that's so cool. We're so happy for you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Ash is going to ask, is going to be a bit fascinated because, well, you wouldn't expect that from a Vieira. Mm-hmm. Um, Bosch is likely not going to have too much to say. Maybe chuckle here and there at some of the antics Balthier and Fran have. But uh, it's going to be very evident that Balthier and Fran are much closer than than just business partners. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, of course, going to tie into the fact that their romance is someone is somewhat advanced when you get to Revenant Wings. Mm-hmm. But that's a uh, that's not the story we're telling. <laughs> yeah, and I have no I have no desire to do a reconstruction of Revenant Wings, for the record. I don't either because I never played the game. Well, that that end. There's just not. There's just not enough ammo. True. Even for, even for a what if. Yeah. But you know that that story will be told. Mm-hmm. You'll get you'll get that moment of closeness, at, at least as close as Fran will let anybody come to her, and you'll understand that while you may not have the details, you don't need to. You just know that despite her loneliness, Fran is happier than she was back in Golmore Jungle. Yeah. I would um I would say that in that in that regard in that regard that when it comes to her when it comes to her sister Mjern, mm-hmm. um the the appro- the approach I'd go with that is that while Mj- while Mjern ha- Mjern um ends up reminding Fran of a little bit too much of her younger self. And mm-hmm. int- and intends on wa- intends on warning her, saying, "If you if you wish to leave if you wish to leave one of these days, I'm not going to stop you, but be but you should be very aware of what that's going to mean." And, and that's exactly what she says. Mm-hmm. She when when they when when they meet in Erut Village or Erut Eru- Village, er, uh, uh, she the the words she says are literally. I have discarded wood and village. I won my freedom. Yet my past has been cut away forever. No longer can my ears hear the green word. This solitude you want, Mjern? That, that is a very frank and straightforward warning. Mm-hmm. Of, yes, I'm free, but there are things that I have lost in that freedom. And obviously, whether or not whether or not Mjern leaves the wood and leaves the wood anyways off screen, that's beyond that's beyond the scope of this story. Yes. Now, 
when it comes to of course of course we of course we do ha we do have some someone of that when it comes to her when it comes to Mjern showing up in the mines with the, with that piece of um neth of manufactured nethocyte. Mm -hmm. Um and of and that and that that end up that is a good way to hammer home how dangerous that material can be. But the the uh, but when it comes to reaching uh, Mount Mount Bur Omisas, I'd still I still I still um keep that I still keep that as well as the appearance of the of the biggest pimp in the game. <laughs> Al Sid McGrass. <laughs> um. Which I, which is a is a case of um bring of bringing up bringing up hopes that th that things are going to be turning up just before things are just before it becomes realized that Vane has dissolved the Senate and mur and murdered his father, making him. Def making him de facto emperor, mm -hmm. even if it's even if it's emperor by le by less than subtle means. Or, actually, I take that back. No, it's very Roman means to do this kind of thing. What you mean? Assassinate him, blame it on someone else, dissolve the Senate, and then get the judges on his side or dead. Yes, that's way too Rome. <laughs> All we need is 32 stabbings, and then we're good. Mm -hmm. Just remember, folks, any salad is a Caesar salad if you stab it enough. <laughs> I think... Um... Now, as, as you know, the way that they test Gabranth is by having him deal the final blow for... Uh, Judge, uh, oh, what was her Dross. name? Dross, yes. Um, and he was very reluctant. Do we want to make him more or less reluctant? Mm. What's the upside? What's the upside and downside to either? Do you think? Because I'm um, minds about it. So, I think that the if we make him less reluctant, it either means that uh, she she it, she wasn't as important to him as he let on, and he's willing to just do anything to eventually get back at the people uh, who actually let me let me provide a bit of a compromise okay um, he isn't a, he isn't as emotional about it at the time but when no when nobody's looking he ends up he ends up um, punching a wall. The the uh, idea that the idea that I'm going with Gabranth has always struck me as some as somebody who's supposed to embody the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and him being and him being more and more stuck into a situation that goes completely against his morals, and even though even though he plays the part as best he can because that's all he's done that's all he's done up to this point, he still absolutely hates it. Mm -hmm. And the the big thing here is that um, he's always viewed Gibranth has always uh, viewed um, Bosch as a coward and a weakling and a liar because Bosch went to Dalmasca when Arcadia um, invaded their little republic of Landis. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, Gabranth, he he accepted the invasion so much so that he eventually became a judge magister. Um, so I think him showing less restraint in the moment, or I mean less uh, less remorse in the moment, is going to be good for advancing his admittedly poorly um poorly executed intention good intentions and also allow him to pursue bosch even further because that's that's been one of his big things he's wanted to take out his brother because his brother he views his brother as the, the most negative person in his life um and then but showing that he truly does regret having to kill uh, Dross. And um, obviously she still tells him protect Larsa. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't, he doesn't like make any obvious motion, but showing that he has more anger about it later in private may also show that he didn't, just become a judge magister he interacted with people he made friends maybe he was actually rather close to dross mm -hmm. gives him a little bit more again a little bit more dimension depth flavor and and humanity yeah now with that with that in mind um the the whole thing the whole thing of ash deciding that go going to war with the empire is the is the only way to to re to resolve the situation this is this once again is one of those moments where there's i've i've kind of been building this idea that um ash and Bo ash and Balthier have a t have a tense alliance they're they're barely they're barely even they're barely even friends but it's and while he doesn't while he doesn't mind ash the decisions that she makes regarding regarding the means of getting of getting back her um kingdom mm. really end up putting really end up putting him off because of the because of the fact that she can just say she can just declare war so casually in his in his eyes mhm mm and again a if it seems like if it seems like I'm making Balthier a bit of a bit of a pragmatist, it's more the fact that Ash's atti Ash's attitude is reminiscent of people that Balthier has never seen eye to eye with and doesn't like seeing that develop in other people. I I don't think that it's pra I don't think it's a pragmatist. It's no. um Balthier has seen power corrupt all around him. I mean I, I, as uh, as he will reveal very soon, um, being the son of Doctor Sid, who used nepotism to appoint him as a judge magister, um, he saw just how much power his his own father wielded, and how much that changed his father. Mm -hmm. He's he has seen multiple times time and again as a judge magister as a sky pirate as neither what power can do to people and he could tell that ash is driven by duty to try and make things right in the way that she perceives is right but that it's very easy to step over that line and justify everything that happens before the goal as right. The whole ends justify the means um, bit. And he doesn't want her to fall to that. It's yeah. less pragmatism and more um, ethical moral crisis. Yeah. And grant granted, the whole thing with them retrieving the Sword of Kings, I'd be perfectly fine with with keep with keeping that with keeping that the still shrine's a cool place too i mean i think we have to yeah and the 
the whole, again and again we have we have the whole thing of a go of a ghostly visit which Ash cl Ash claims to have seen um Von Von didn't Von didn't and and Bal and Balthier is is one is once again in, right in the middle go right in the middle going you get you guys really you guys really need to knock it off about ghosts yeah he's basically letting them know that the ghosts are the past and the past, while it helps to build a foundation for who we are in the present, mm -hmm. isn't shouldn't be something that binds us. Yeah. Um. And I would I. I would still have I would still have it that um, when it comes that you that when it comes to Judge Ber Judge Bergen, he does still amplify himself using the using the Nethysite. Mm -hmm. The th the only thing that it probably change is ba is Balthier ha again reinforcing his disdain for judges, and even more so with how with how it dr with how that thing drove him nuts. Yeah, and uh, this was which part was this again? Was that in the Still Shrine? It was. Ju it was. Um. Sh it was after. It was. It was after um, Baragan had killed um, um, Grand Grand Anastasis. Oh yeah. And had the, and had Mount Bur Bur Omisas bombed. Mm-hmm. And and this is um, this is after uh, this is all just before they go off to the still shrine then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now when it come when it comes to when it comes to heading to the Dra the Dracular lab the Dracular lab I'd st I'd still keep that and I'd st I there was that whole thing with Balthier warning about the power of Nethysite. I'd say in I'd say a further warning that he would give is the is what can is what power can do to people. And the, and this and thus the as well as the revelation of why he became a sky pirate in the first place and abandoning his abandoning his old name. As well as him warning, giving a first warning about Venat. Mm -hmm. Um. And then, of course, he th this whole conversation that happens at the Fonz Coast Hunters Camp. Mm -hmm. Um. Can basically be kept with a little, a couple small additions, like you said, um, stronger, stronger uh, warnings about Nethysite and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and and he even says, you know, that he's trying to cut the ties to the past, and that no one needs to be consumed by power. Mm -hmm. And I, when it comes to reaching our. When it comes to reaching Arcades and and meet and meeting up with meeting up with some old fr meeting up with some old friends, um, that br that of course brings us to one of the one of the best guest characters in the whole game, Redis. Ah, uh, yes, good old Redis. Who? I don't think it. I don't think it would be too much of a stretch to have Re to have Redis be the person who, who um. Who's ba who's basically the godfather of so of so many sky pirates all over Ivalice. Mm hmm Like much in the same way that um every but that every film every filmmaker and adjacent in Germany claimed to have something to do with the gap captain of the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, um every sky pirate has at least one Redis story, whether they whether he took them in at some point, bailed them out at some point. Everybody's got some story about him. Yeah. Oh. And when it come when it come and of course that that inevitably leads to the first confrontation with Sid and the um name the name of the shadow that you, that everybody keeps seeing. Um, Vana. Mm-hmm. Um. 
with thumb. And when it comes when it comes to when it comes to Redis himself, there's not a whole lot we need to change regarding his background. Um, I ju I just emphasize that he's a bit of a Blackbeard like figure when it comes to how everyone respects him. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna bring up if you're gonna bring up different types of pirates, you may as well go all in with it. And. I would say I would say that um when it comes to when it comes to he, when it comes to heading to the um the crystal where the where you for, where you eventually first see the um Acuria, mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, this is this is of course where you can have the the fact that they they deem Vinod's actions as heresy. As well as well as getting the tr as well as getting the treaty blade. In order to get more nethesite, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say I would say that e that even that even with this, there's still there's still that there's still that lingering comment that both here made about about power, especially since well Ret. Redis has a Redis has a grudge against against Nethesite, um, period. Mm -hmm. But I'd say I'd say that as it goes on, that that's where you can you have it, this eventually leads up to that same revelation that. The ghost of Razzler was ju was just a means to manipulate um, Ash, and since everybody can see it, that's where you can have both your quip about it not being that much of a ghost at all. Yeah. Um. Of course, of course, you do have. You can still have the fight the fight against um Sid. You kind of have to. And I'd say, in, I'd say in this regard, this would be one of the rare cases where Balthier doesn't ha isn't as quippy as he usually is. It's because he's fighting his own father, and he's really torn up because he hopes he can save him. Yeah, free him from whatever traps him. Mm -hmm. And. I would still keep. I would still keep the whole thing of Redis sacrificing himself to destroy the Sun Crest. Um. And when it comes to that, of course, leads to the to the final um the final dungeon or ra rather, that being the that being the assault on the fortress Bahamut. Although, when you look at the thing, it's less of a fortress and more of a giant fucking tower. I mean, it is called a sky fortress. Mm -hmm. But if, if um, given how, given how give, it does make sense, given how a lot of the big, a lot of the bigger fi um ships that have been, that the Arcadians have used have all been named after classic summons. Mm -hmm. And well, the strongest of them is it, and the one who provided your first class upgrade in the original game. In the original Final Fantasy, I should say, was was the King of Dragons. Yep, Bahamut himself. Mm -hmm. Plus, if, plus, if we're using the Star Wars analog, well, here's our Death Star. Yeah. Oh. And so, even though the Sun Crest is broken, mm -hmm. um, the battle, the, the you know this giant ass battle station, uh is still is still um a threat yeah you know, they they go in they uh yeah i and a, apparently i would st i would st i'm still would you still have it that the reason the whole thing got activated is because of the sheer amount of mist that ha that happened when the sun crest activated um 
I mean, it, it's that mist is what powers it. I mean, mist is what powers all of the the you know the the uh, the airships essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and it needed that high amount of mist. Yeah. So, uh, yes, the, the the mist awakens the the fortress. Mm-hmm. Um. Fran, of course, fall, falls to the mist madness because that's a lot of fucking mist. Yeah. And then finally, Redis, you know, uses throws away his life um, in an, in an, in the attempt to destroy the Sun Crest, um, which, which is successful, but it was too late. Yeah, there was way too much mist already output. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then this. This is the final, le- like you said, the final leg. Mm-hmm. Um, Bothier in the Strahl takes everybody up to the Sky Fortress, and they find Vane there. Yeah. And of course, of course, of course, there is that. But before that, there's the there is the confrontation with Gabranth, and the way it, the way it was ki- the way it was kind of set up or in in the canon version is that Gabronth had get, had had get, had um given up everything except his hatred for his brother. Mm-hmm. I get I get the feeling that with with all the unsavory things that he has been tasked to do up to up to this point with all, with all, with all of the um compromises he's had he's had to make in what he believes was a greater good. Um, at this at this point, it's a matter of I either I either go to it's a it's a matter of the um the du- the duty of being a judge is the only th- is the only thing he really has left. Yeah. Um. But throughout all throughout all of this, I'm try- I think that I th- I do think that th- that this is pr- this is probably the only real spot that we that could be had to go to go into why why exactly um why exactly Gabronth killed the king cuz i don't cuz i don't think that w- i don't think it was ever given from his perspective aside fr- aside from the whole thing of his, of his brother being weak in his eyes um it wasn't ever given, but it was pretty heavily implied that since they were twins, he could uh, he could strike what he considered the cruelest blow against Bosch, which is to have him stamped as traitor and ki- and executed as one due to uh, being perceived as the man who killed his own king. Which I su- I su- I suppose I suppose in some I suppose in some regard, but just go just going on implication alone, it feels kind of weak to me. So we should make it a little a little more explicit, but I don't think we need to show the scene again. We don't, or even we don't. A, or even a build up to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, just when he sees Bosch there along with everybody else. Something like, I struck you the greatest blow in your life. You should be down in the dirt for uh, for all time. Why are you here? Mm-hmm. Something along those lines. Yeah, because for him, for him, it's a case of there. There is a way that things were that things were suppo- that things were supposed to work as karma for what he for what he did in the past. Mm-hmm. Especially, especially since some. Um, Bosch, when he Bosch, when he was a when he was a soldier under under the when he was a knight of the king, um, very much tried to portray himself as as the picture of nobility. Yep, which would have been spitting in uh, Noah's face. Mm-hmm. So in that in that regard in that regard, he's even w- even with his position even with that even with all that happened. He sees Bosch as a massive hypocrite. Yeah. Especially since, well, he's still he, especially since he, for all intents and purposes, is still working for working for 
a Delmasca. Working for Delmasca, and st and still has set as nothing to say about the Republic that he ab that he supposedly abandoned. Mm -hmm. And as far as as far as whether or not he actually ab whether or not he actually abandoned it, um. The reason why I didn't go into that is because it is because one, I'd like to keep that kind of thing ambiguous, and two, I didn't see a reason to reason to do it. Yeah, there's, it, as we have stated in the past and continue to state into the future, um, there's no need to explain th some things. Sometimes it's what's unexplained that continues to keep things alive. Mm -hmm. And. Eventually, eventually, that does that does lead to the confrontation with with um, Vane. Yeah, and um, I don't see much reason to change anything about it. Yeah. Um, you still have Vane going through his various weird fucking forms. Mm -hmm. uh, you still have the point where uh, Vane. Tells Gabranth to protect Larsa, so Gabranth goes, "Okay, fuck you! I'm gonna kill you too." Mm -hmm. um, and then Vane tries to strike down the Judge, but Larsa pops up with the manufactured Nethysite and absorbs the magic swords. Mm -hmm. And that's when Vane goes to uh, Venet, v uh, Vena, and they combine into the final, final boss. Yeah, the und the Undying. Yeah. You have uh you have the party beat down the undying and kill him. Mm -hmm. And I think the ending can even mostly mostly stay the same. Yeah. Um just like Balthier said before they uh before they um actually got up there, um Balthier told uh Vaughn to take the straw if something were going to happen to him and get out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, that was all the way back um, back when they were getting a uh, getting to the Pharos to find the Sun Crest mm -hmm. uh, that he tells him that. And so, um, and the reason that that Balthier and friends stay behind is because the Bahamut is now falling well, from all the damage. Um, and it's about to fall on the city. Yes. Yep. So Balthier and Fran, in, in the nick of time, by the skin of their the teeth, the seat of their pants, uh, get the uh, glacier rings working mm -hmm. to at least aim the city outside of Rabinaster. Mm -hmm. But it's assumed, at least for now, that they died in the crash. Because it crashes outside of the city in a big fiery explosion of doom and destruction. Yeah. When it comes to the, when it comes to the uh, the epilogue, um, as far as the one the one year gap, I would I would still keep that, but in in instead in instead of instead of the whole thing of the of um of the Strahd appearing sto appearing stolen. I'd ju I'd just as well have it that um both that Balthier and Fran just sh just show up um at the hangar where it is. I I had a, a slightly more um theatrical and funny thing that fits Balthier perfectly and Fran is of course going to be making her stereotypical not quite exasperated face with Balthier's antics. Um but it, it it'll be uh it'll be a you know a scene of of Vaughn and, and Penelo getting ready to go on their next you know whatever they're do they've been doing as sky pirates now that they are the sky pirates mm -hmm. um and if, as they take off and they're going into into midair uh Balthier puts his hand on Vaughn's shoulder and says so what heading are we going to now and why is this deck so dirty <laughs> Of course, of course. When it comes when it comes to, I can certainly go with that. And when it comes to the question of how the hell did you survive, well, the the response is, 
That's a, well. Let let me tell let me tell let me tell you that particular tale, and that and that's the <laughs> that would be the end of it. Uh. I think I think it I think it would also be a good point. Um, well, you see here. Let me tell you the particular tale where I'm the main character, because <laughs> Balthier is the main character of his life, mm -hmm. and everyone else is just along for the ride. And then that that can be the trail out to to credits. Yeah. Now, of course, there's a lot. There's a lot that skipped because one of the one of the problems with trying to do with trying to do this is Final Fantasy XII doesn't really have an act structure as it's presented, which is why things got a little bit rambly in this. If we were doing a re if we were doing a reconstruction proper, we would we probably would have tried to structure things in either a three act structure or a Kisho Tenket structure. Yeah. And the the other part is that Final Fantasy XII doesn't really need a lot of change. That's why this is a what if instead of a reconstruction. Mm -hmm. There, like we said at the beginning, there are some small things missed, some small paths not not fully explored because of Matsuno's departure and the scramble afterwards. Yes. The scramble was so bad that the game was actually released two years late. Um, and while that did cause for a little bit of jumble when it came to the story, um, like you said, no act structure. It, in fact, feels like an anthology. Self-contained stories going from place to place. I would I would say, I would also say that there's a... It, while it's not as bad as some other things we've tackled, there's a bit of an issue of activity but not movement yeah a couple pacing issues oh. um this is this is a problem that's even as i know as much as you as much as you hate it um even something like 10 2 the previous mm -hmm. final fantasy game didn't really have this is this issue there was there was always this escalation of stakes between the major factions with the Gull wings caught in the middle of that. While this is true, that doesn't mean the game is excusable. I know. <sighs> that's was. I'm not. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying that's <laughs> beside the point. I understand, but mm. if I need to, if I need to use another, ex if I need to use the, the example before that, um, consider the the um, not quite Sayuki style journey that we saw in ten. Yes, that that's that had a lot of forward movement and activity, and there was always some sort of uh, poignant escalation to the to the places you got to, until eventually we get. Fuck! I I love the goddamn zipping down um, wire scene. <sighs> the whole, th I believe that was in Bavel. Yes, that was the Bavel invasion scene. After you take down the lightning dragon thing, mm -hmm. and and you, everybody's literally skating down these an these anchored wires. That that is that is proper escalation. At that point, you've gone from guy saved by some albed and then washed up on a on an island with some blitzball players and a summoner and taking her around to do stuff. And it just gets deeper and deeper until eventually that Bavel scene is like a, one of the best climaxes in the game. Yeah. But the, 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 gr the gradual, st the gradual stakes involved, yeah. the, involved there is the, fa is the fact that you're get you're getting, you're, you're get you're getting a, um, a a more a more ta a more and more tainted picture of the Yevon faith. Yes, you're getting a uh, you're starting to see that the the man behind the curtain, the uh, the puppet master behind the puppets, mm -hmm. just slowly drawing that back further and further as the as the story goes on, until it until it climb until that climax occurs when you confront Unaleska. Yeah. 
because because once once again everything everything has kind of been building towards this destination of um Xanarkand. Yep. On, and that only to have the rug pulled out from under you when it comes when it comes to uh when it comes to both Unaleska and the and the um the fact that the journey that summoners take is just one is just one big continuing scheme. One big continuing scheme of suicide pacts. Mm-hmm. Now that be that being said, that being said, while th- while this is the end of the of this particular this particular tweaking, this particular what if regarding regarding um, Final Fantasy XII. Of course, this doesn't mean that we're d- that we're done when it comes to this for for the whole franchise because there's a few things that I, there's a few things that I've that I've wanted to tweak for a while and a few things I've wanted to reconstruct, even though one of them is going to be one hell of an endeavor because I've noticed that the ones that I, f- I feel I need to reconstruct the most are the ones that don't ha- that don't have a set of arcs but rather the whole activity without movement. I. I hesitate to even ask, and so I won't, because I'm pretty sure I know the answers. Don't worry, eight's not on the list. Well, eight I would want to reconstruct for different reasons, but that's a different story. If I'm be, I'm not saying that eight is perfect, but um, I don't think eight, I don't think eight fits our criteria. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. It would be an entirely different thing. But that's again, regardless of of what I'm thinking of. I'm just like, plus, no. Plus some. Um, I'm not sh- plus I know th- I know that around that time there were um translation problems. Not just translation issues though. There was there, again, rumor mills being what they are, there were some other things discussed. Mm-hmm. But as far, but as far as the, as, the, as far as the, as far as the, um, as far as the PS2 era, um, Ten Two is not getting a reconstruction. Fuck that. Not even, not even a what if, simply because the, because once again, it, it doesn't meet I, it doesn't meet our criteria for other reasons. <laughs> putting aside Zan's, putting aside Zan's bias that. He has, and I don't. It's not a bias. I played that game, Monk. I played it to its very end and got the true ending. I have an extensive experience that all signs point to that game is fucking hot garbage and deserves to be shit-canned. Are you assuming... How bold of you to assume I don't have that kind of experience? Well, then you know I'm not. Highest. D. Regardless, it's o- regardless. It's off the table. Yes. <laughs> and for the, for the record, when it comes to when it comes when it comes to when it comes to um side mater- side material, I'm ba- I'm basically dancing. Or I'm I'm just gonna drop the pretense. The one I the one I want to do, and it's gonna be a while before I do it, is the thirteen trilogy. They're not, they're not, they're not ten too bad, but they're just kind of, eh. I th- I pick the I pick that trilogy because I think because I do think that it does check all our boxes. It does. That's why I said they're kind of eh. Plus, the seventh generation was a dark, dark time for role playing games. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> Hello, Mass Effect Three. Or ju- or just the nad- just the nadir of that dumbass JRPG versus WRPG debate around that time. You mean the RPG versus RPG debate? Because there's no difference. Yeah. It's just that it's just that journalists need to ma- need to make a difference so that so that they could create a self licking ice cream cone. But, Hold on, Monk. I don't. I don't think they heard the air quotes around journalists hard enough. <laughs> well, I can't. I can't put up the Doctor Evil finger quotes gif up. 
but let's not and say we did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but I want I want to posit a bit of a theory, and this is something I brought up with Zan before we went live. I uh, I honestly think that tw that um the design of twelve provided a template for the design of a realm reborn. Pieces of it, I I definitely see that as well. Now, granted, there's DNA from the entire franchise in in Final Fantasy fourteen, especially in the wake of a Realm Reborn. But I'd say I'd say a visual template is cert is certainly there with twelve. Granted, it certainly didn't hurt that Yoshida was handling some of the art. But even w even with that. The 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 approach it has the approach it has with kingdoms the approach it has with um, its particular brand of Magitech and the like is not too far removed from what Twelve presents. Yeah, it's not a one to one thing, but there's enough DNA that I can de that I can definitely see it. Yeah, and. It once again, once again, if you, once again, the best way to learn, the best way to learn is to learn from the past, not worship the past. I don't want, I don't want to turn into razor fist here, but to learn from it. The past is a foundation upon which you can build. It is not something that should chain you down. Mm -hmm. But with that, but with that said. That is going to that is going to do it for this late episode of Geek Watch. We had planned for this on Sunday, but the one shot we were doing of Heavens and Heresies that day ended up going a little bit longer than anticipated. In the best way possible, too. I got to intimidate a priestess. And I got to pop a goddamn mage's head because she didn't do what I said. Which We'll be getting we'll be getting into all of that in a in a couple of weeks, and of co of course I do have I do have a few I do have some more interviews pl some some more interviews planned for the for the coming days, Inclu and the next and the next installment in Veil of the Void where we get to start going into the juicy bits. All the dangly bits. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs>